Exactly. Take us through the smile happy work. You know, that kidding? that was, you know, I actually contemplated on, on how to do that. And I felt like smile happy needed another deep one. And the other horse is pretty well fit. So we tried to lay, lay Tis the Bomb outside so they didn't engage too much early. Um, I gave instructions that a minute would be nice. The track's playing pretty fast, I think. And they went in a minute and a fifth. You know, these guys are wonderful riders. I mean, I know that some people might say, oh, they're not like like the Ortiz brothers or anything like that. But these guys are wonderful riders. And you give them instructions like that, and they hit it spot on. And, you know, we just got a little maintenance work here to, to do. And I might do the same thing next week. You know, uh, Smile Happy's drinking a bit of water, cooling out, which he... He may need the fitness and um, one one more like that, you know, we, we wouldn't have an excuse. I was going to ask you about it because Smile Happy, you've, I don't see you baby them in here, but he's been very lightly raced, fair? Yeah, I did that on purpose. I mean, I felt like I was sit, sitting on him all winter. I only wanted two preps coming into Kentucky, which I think that can get us to, you know, the Derby and the Preakness because you're going to have to come back quick and you didn't you didn't want a horse that was wilted a little bit. But, uh, you know, both, both, both races are really important. But, um, you know, it's gone, it's gone well up to now, and, and today was good. And I think, like I said, I think I'm leaning towards doing the exact same thing next weekend. What, what did you learn about him out of the bluegrass? I mean, he seems like, I, I know he got beaten all that, but it looks like there's a lot of gas in the tank. Well, the, the, the two starts are kind of, they were opposite approaches, both starts. In Louisiana, when, when we were second to Epicenter, I think we were too far back. And, you know, we talked about letting him run to the first turn, and I think Corey relaxed a little bit going into the first turn. He ended up with a lot of work to do. And, and I thought the horse ran great to be second. And, of course, Epicenter won wire to wire, and he's a special horse. And then in the bluegrass, we decided from an outside draw that we were going to kind of let him skip away from there, which he did, but then he got a little tired the last 16th of a mile. Um, and I thought, I thought that Zandon and uh, Pratt did a great job timing his finish. So, um, so the little bit of tired in, in, in the bluegrass, and then, you know, today he still acts like he still needs a little fitness. And, you know, look, um, I, th I think we've got it spot on, and, you know, now we need a little bit of luck when we get him out there. Talk about Tis the Bomb. Tis the Bomb's just a total pro. I mean, you know, Brian set outside, and, um, you know, he's a, he's a horse that I think we may lay a little closer to the pace because he'll have less adversity. Um, which he struggled with in Florida, but he's done he's done well since then, and you know two wins back to back, so he's pretty high on himself right now. Having a local owner for Smile Happy, what's that like? I mean, he's obviously got a personality, and he's he's not the million dollar guy in terms of some of the guys who spend two million to keep him for one horse. It's thrilling, you know. Um, you know, uh, if we pull this off, I kind of we're local legends, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, you know, the Mackin family in particular deserves this, I think. They've been at it a long time. You know, they've lost their mother and father recently, you know, in the last several years, which which um, they were an important part of the Lucky Seven. You know, they were the, the you know, two of the Lucky Seven. And so I think it'd be fantastic. I mean, I think they're handling it really well. You know, you go, you go into this thing and, and, and uh, you got to have mojo. I think our man Baffert said, you got to have mojo going in. And I think we've got it. And, and um Fingers crossed. People you're like a, the local story, right? You're a Lexington guy. He's a Louisville guy. Is that cause any friction? <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm, I'm actually, you know, maybe transferring a little from blue to red myself. Yeah. I've been, I've had a home here in Louisville for 30 years, so it's not like, uh, but I, you know, I bounced back and forth and certainly grew up in Lexington, but you know, Kentucky's, you know, both towns are fantastic. So. Does it make it more special because of all the Kentucky connections? I mean, you got Corey, I mean, the ownership, you and all that. I mean, is there a special extra little thing in there because of this? I would think so. Yeah, I do. I think there's something to that. You know, it's a, it's a hard thing to accomplish and, you know, we're in position to possibly accomplish it. And, and I've knocked on the door and the thing and you wonder if fate fate brings you the the victory, but if it doesn't, it doesn't, and you know we'll be back if it doesn't. You trained for the Mackins years ago, uh, but this is your first group of yearlings for them. Did they come to you and say, um, no, "We're trying to get to the Derby" or anything like that? When they came to you and told you to buy some yearlings for them, asked you to, what, what were they? Did they say what they were looking for? I had horses from for, for the Mackins back in 2001, 2002. I had a really good filly named Minister's Baby. Um, a deputy minister Philly that we had some fun with. We won the Gardenia. And then, um, you know, I think that transition when I took the season off kind of confused a lot of people. You know, back in 2005, my mom was terminal and 
I stepped back and worked as an agent and obviously transferred horses to other people. But then a, a few years ago, he, he called and said, you know, hey, we want to send you a few. And, and um, then he asked me to buy this group um, a couple falls ago. And that's my specialty. That's what I do. I go to, I go to auction. I, I see horses I like. I recommend them to the people that I work for. And I think we've got four state courses out of six in the first crop. So, so we're off to a good start. But I told him it's downhill from here. So we'll see. <laughs> You've got a reputation in the bank for the buck. Hey, you, know, you do a lot with the money you have. Is that mm -hmm. fair? Well, I try hard. You know, I always felt like if, if somebody gave me money to spend on a racehorse, you know, you're lucky to have somebody have disposable income to do that. And I've always felt like if you do it wisely, then there's a chance they're going to give you more money. So if you do that, you kind of keep your business going. So, um, you know, I don't get enamored with the high priced yearlings. I, I rather find value, you know, in, in the basket and, and then uh, try to get as much out of them as you can. And, you know, it's a game of failure. It's tough.